All right, everyone, it's really great to have you back. And if you're new here or new in FPV, you're definitely in the right spot as I'm about to dive into Liftoff FPV Simulator and set it up from scratch with everything you need to know for best functionality. Okay, this is the official website, liftops-game.com. And the one we're talking about is the lift of FPB drone racing as the one I'm highlighting you on the screen. This is the main one you need. There's also a separate simulator, the lift of micro drones and the console one and some different things they have in here, but we are going to focus only on this one. So this is the official website, but you are not going to purchase from there. You are going to get it from Steam. At the moment, they're running a discount. Uh, I have it in pound, but normal price is going to be around $20 without any kind of uh, add-ons. And this doesn't include the lift of microdons, which as mentioned before, is a separate one. So just search on Steam or on Google lift of FPB drone racing and look for specifically this one I'm highlighting. And this is the one you need. Okay. Now let's jump straight into it and let's start setting up together and I'm going to turn on my camera so you can see as I'm doing with you at the same time setting up the FPV remote controller and so on. So this is an FPV remote controller. This is specifically the DJI FPV remote controller 2. And if you want to play or to practice into liftoff simulator or any other FPV simulators for that matter, you are going to need one. Well, I'm not going to say get this. Actually, I'm going to say do not get this because this is quite expensive. Don't get those only to practice in liftoff or any other FPV simulators. You can get a cheap one some or something maybe you want to use with your main FPV drone if you're building one if you buy an FPV drone or if you already got an FPV remote controller is exactly what you need. You can also practice with an Xbox or PlayStation controller but I will definitely do not recommend those because you will struggle a lot and it will affect your skill level and your learning curves. Let's just assume that you already have an FPV controller. For that reason, connect it to your computer via USB cable, USB-C, or any kind of connection that does have your controller. You connect to your computer or to your laptop, and we will jump straight into Liftoff, and we are going to set it up together. All right. Okay, so I'm starting Liftoff, and I've been dealing with some issues. I'm not able to start as a new game. Therefore, I'm going to explain everything what happens when you start Liftoff for the first time. You are going to be met with a screen which tells you a few steps on how to calibrate the remote controller and which type of controller you have. And if you need to do any kind of bindings on that controller, that's it, nothing else. You can simply skip those. I do it all the time and it's just start to deal with all the settings from within this menu, this screen. So just feel free to skip those settings if you start for the first time, okay? And you get to this screen, nothing else. And I'm going to walk you from here. First thing we, we're gonna do, we are going to go to options and controls, okay? And then we are going to go to controller. This is where your controller should be recognized. Mine is still calibrated because I'm not been able to wipe my settings, but yours will be not. You can select your controller. This is my DJF remote controller. Okay. And it tells me it's recognized. Anyway, what you're going to do next, you are just going to press calibrate and start calibration. If you do not calibrate your remote controller, you will not be able to fly in liftoff. Even if it's recognized, the settings will be off, the access will be off because it needs to set to each of these access the roll, throttle, pitch, and yo, the max value, mean value, and the center values. So it knows exactly how to operate. For example, now it's max throttle, it will recognize max, max throttle there. Try to follow this on the screen at the same time. This is the reason you need to calibrate. It takes only one single minute to calibrate the remote controller and then we can go to the next step. We save these settings and we are going to exit. Back to the main menu. I'll recommend going through the options. First thing first, going to game and we are going to set these things up together. I'll have this enabled, show, game, show drone trails and game triggers, festival items, environmental bounds, 
so you don't so you know when you're getting out of the map so you'll turn around don't hide this that's fine i set my unique system to metric because i'm european guy but you can uh, set to imperial to miles if you want to display language english and you have french and i think this is russian i'm not sure 100 percent but you can have some community translations never try that usually english is fine we go to gameplay what i recommend is to disable this god mode if you disable then when you crash the drone your drone is going to be damaged this is how you learn it all the time rather than crash a million times even if you're at the beginning crashing your drone in an fv simulator is fine because that's what it's supposed to be so let it be damaged and you see exactly how your drone interacts with the environment disable this that's my recommendation i also recommend to show propellers in first person view because flying an FPV drone with very few exceptions you most likely see propellers on the view okay so have that enabled you can also start with camera noise lately i've been disabling when i was creating content around lifto but you can have this enabled but at the beginning just disable it it's a bit aggressive with the camera noise especially for a beginner have this enabled use on screen display the osd you will need to see the osd so you can see some details of the drone the same in real life when you fly in a with drone you will have to see the details on osd and the same show joystick overlay in osd because you can see how your joystick is interacting with the controller in the game it should show, show the same thing at the same time because here's the thing i had an issue in the past with another controller where i had a bit of delay and i could see only into the simulator in liftoff that it was responding just like half a second later than the controller i'll recommend have one battery simulation although it doesn't make much difference even if they had like half a year ago an update with the battery simulation uh you can always detect stands i usually have it disabled but you can also have it enabled if you want and enable prop wash and prop wash around 20 percent is fine so whenever you dive in or you do some aggressive moves even in real life, you will have a little bit of prop wash, like vibration of the drone when you do such very sudden moves. So it mimics the reality because if you don't do prop wash in simulator, you're gonna make those in real life and it's gonna be awkward. And yeah, anyway. And for race, I, you can skip countdown by keep leaving like that. Show race guides, you need to see the direction you're going in. So they basically change nothing from here, okay? Next thing, change graphics, uh, depending on your computer, uh, my computer is pretty much decent, so it does support having like higher bit of graphics, at least in Lifto Simulator. Uh, shadow distance, FPV lens size, keep it standard, you're gonna get used to that. Maybe you can put my much wider lens or narrower, it's up to you, you can play with that, but I usually keep it standard, it's fine. Uh, on audio. I just disable the music you can use custom playlist if you want to for so example if you have your own music when you practice that's a great thing to have isn't it uh, of course you have the controllers and buttons still there are some different things you can map and uh, for that reason we are going to get in here because it does help to do a few things on fpv remote controller it's a good thing to enable the arm and disarm buttons so you can get used from the simulator to arm and disarm an FPV drone because you will need those when you're playing in real life so I have button 6 and 7 from the DJI FPV remote controller too and the turtle mode so when you flip upside down you literally flip it back upside down it's a recovery mode if you want you can set any of these buttons to your FPV remote controller or on the left side to your keyboard but I usually those three or maybe even this set if you want a port one okay uh let's go to the dlc i have purchased dlc's the knife fever and sleep stream djfb is free now tools you have workbench and you have a drone editor and gift boxes we are not going to get into that because it's not part of the functionality settings and at the moment there's nothing else you should uh, worry about you can uh, log in just right here I haven't been logged for most of the time I'm playing Liptop, that's why I'm only level 20. But if you want to play multiplayer, to practice multiplayer, then definitely you will need to log in with an account from them. Okay, we are going to free flight because we are going to freestyle, not going to freestyle, 
free flight. And I'm going to tell you in a second why. Because it just gives you the ability to fly and practice without any time trials, like do X amount of uh, freestyle in one minute and so on. And here you have all the maps. Okay, if you enable the night people or sleep stream, it will show you only a few specific maps, like the maps that supports, for example, car racing or planes or other things they have, or night fever all together with sleep stream or one or the other or none. For now, we are going to go to Straw Bell because this is my favorite map and I just love practicing it and no track. Okay, we are going to select the drone now. This is uh, my drone, you can have all of them here and you can just look to those. Some of them, they have, they are bigger than, some of them, for, they are for freestyles. Maybe they're super, like super fast freestyle. Them, some of them, they are for racing. It tells you the details about the drone here. I'm going to pick one for freestyle. And here we have the JFPV drone just because we have enabled the DLC, but we're not going to pick this one. This is the only drone that you have the interface differently into the game. Let's jump into this one. And here is the lift off. Remember when I uh, press arm and disarm, I enable and disable arm and disarm. I'm arming the drone and I start practicing a little bit. Try to follow my lead. Okay. Just the throttle and look how I move, roll and yo, just for small movements, okay. Think about one thing, when you practice FPV simulators, your remote controllers are going to be super sensitive, so you just need to move a little bit to be able to turn around and practice as well. And what do you actually need this kind of control? Just because you can make all kinds of tricks, you can learn all kinds of stuff. And so on, all right? We are going to get to do other settings just in a second. Because your controller is not going to respond like this. Why? Because we are going to next thing to the flight controller settings. It tells me to attempt to modify the blueprint. We press yes and why. Now we get into the rates. This is the trick. It's quite difficult to know what rates you like or you don't like, depends on the sensitivity or depends on the flight style you have or depends on the drone, depends on 1 million things, the rates are different for everyone. It's exactly like driving a car, when you drive a car and you're steering the wheel, it's different from car to car, some of them they are more sensitive, some of them they are less sensitive, same with the rates and we have a few different ones. I do have some of my race profiles and we are going to create a new one and follow this through, okay? Go to beta flight and let me pull up my phone because I have my own rates, which I actually like them. And you can try with those. If you don't like, you can find some other on the internet you can, or you can just ask Charge GPT to give you some rates for your fly style if you want less sensitive or more sensitive. So my rates, 135 RC rate on roll 135 on pitch and 125 on yo the standard rate 070 070 and 065 not much different but here we're going to put 0 0.20 this one 0 0.22 and 0 that's 9 0 0.18 18 the rcx for the flights around the mid center a bit less sensitive so for example, if I put 0 0.8, see, basically you will take a lot longer to start reacting more to that controller, which will allow you for a much sensitive flight. So if you want more, more accuracy flights, you increase the expo. If you want more snappy and freestyle, you decrease the expo. We are going just to save this. You can save the profile if you want to. And this is about it, 900, 900 max velocity and 714. We resume it and let's see how this is different from before. So if you see, I'm moving a little bit more the joysticks, the sticks to be able to perform the same action. And it's actually responding just a little bit less. This actually allows me for more accurate flight 
and hours and diving and everything basically it's those traits i created them as to be more like a hybrid between accurate flights and freestyle okay for example if i want freestyle i can easily freestyle dive there are no issues follow me this true But at the same time, let's say I want to orbit around this pillar. I want to say some word I'm not supposed to say. Okay, do you see exactly how much I'm moving my uh, joysticks? How much I have my throttle, how much I have my yo and my roll to be able to accurate light, which will require you a little bit of expo. So it's not that difficult to do it. Okay, on top of this, there are no more other settings to think about to do. You have the recordings, but it's recording game and it doesn't record as a file on your computer. So you can put it on YouTube or anything. No, that's different. This is just in game recording. So if you do any kind of tricks, it does record entirely separately, but I never use that function and yeah we have the same graphic options and game option drone selection level selection if you want to change from in game and that will be it i don't think i missed anything and this is basically all you need to practice as best at best in laptop there are a few tips i want to mention if you have a dji fpv remote controller the second one and i think the third one as well and you want to connect to a MacBook, you cannot connect it directly from USB-C cable to another USB-C into the MacBook. That will not work. That will not recognize the controller. It's a bug, always been like that. Okay, you need to connect it to an adapt adapter, USB-C to USB-A adapter, and then the adapter for, to be from A to C, and only that you can connect into the MacBook. I know it sounds strange, but trust me, that will work. Otherwise, you can't use only this one, the DJI FPV remote controllers two and the third one, as far as I know. But with Windows computer, works anyway. With other controllers, non-issue at all. So that will be it, all right, guys. Well, what can I say? Keep training, keep practicing, and once again, Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions about absolutely anything FPV, about laptop or any FPV simulators related, please feel free to write a comment in the description below and I will do my best possible to answer you. I usually answer to everyone. So yeah, let's crush this intentionally. Thank you very much once again for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and stay in loop with more FPV simulators related content. Okay, talk to you soon, best wishes.